Hi folks, so the topic we have in front of us here today guys is the topic of polygons and what we're actually specifically going to be learning about today is how to construct a polygon inside of a circle. Okay, and as you can see here we have three circles, one for each type of polygon that we're learning about. Um, what we've previously learned about polygons, okay, is that we have three types, well we actually have many types, but the three that we're learning in our course is how to construct a pentagon, a hexagon and an octagon. We have previously learned in a previous video uh, how to construct them when we're given the line lengths, okay, and what we learned was how to construct them by using the exterior angle and using a protractor. Now today what we're actually going to be learning about is how to construct a pentagon inside of a circle, a hexagon inside of a circle, and an octagon inside of a circle. We're not given the line lengths, but we're, we're going to use the angle to help us out this time, okay. So in a previous video, I'm going to start with the pentagon here. Uh, we learned that the exterior angle of a pentagon is 72 degrees, okay? I'm going to do a little bit of maths here to explain how it works down here, okay? So we learned that 72 degrees, it came from 360, which is the degrees in a circle, divided by the number of sides, which was 5 for a pentagon. 360 divided by 5 gives us our exterior angle, which is 72. Now, just using here a little bit of simple maths, okay? If we have the exterior angle of 72 for the pentagon, we know that the interior angle is going to be 108. That means, sorry, I got that from a straight line, which is 180. 180 minus 72 leaves us 108, okay? So that angle there, from this line here to this line, that angle there is 108. Now we can see here, clearly, I've already got the center of my pentagon, okay? And when I connected all the corners of the pentagon to the center, Really what I was doing by connecting all of them was I was actually bisecting these angles here. So this angle here was bisected. Likewise, this angle was bisected as well, okay, to get the center. So when you bisect any two angles of a pentagon, uh, it'll help you find the center or of any polygon in general. So by bisecting those angles, we know the interior angle, as I said, the overall interior angle was 108. By bisecting that, half of 108, that would mean that this angle here is 54 degrees okay likewise this angle here is also 54 okay once again angle over here we know to be 108 because the exterior angle is 72 that makes this 54 54 now just for the sake of looking at those two base angles there this one and this one we can see 54 54 54 and 54 okay and if you actually look at the shape that's inside, we can see it's made up of five triangles. And if we look at the two base angles, they're the same. Therefore, this actually makes it an isosceles triangle. Now, we can know that the angle inside of a triangle is 180. So 54 and 54, that's 108. That means this angle that's actually left up here is 72. Okay, so if this one was 54, this would be also 72. And likewise, 72, 72, 72, and all these angles here are 54, okay? So we can see actually the angle we have there is 72. So the exterior angle of the pentagon is 72, and when you actually connect it up with the inside lines, okay, uh, to the center, that angle there is also 72. And that's the angle we're actually going to use to help us here, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to come down here, and now we're going to use that 72 degrees to help us construct our pentagon down here. So as you can see, I've drawn a circle, it has a radius of 50, and I've got my center O, and what I've done is I have drawn a line vertically up to the top just to kind of intersect the circumference, and I call that point A. So if you imagine center O was here, and A was up here. So technically I've got, I've got a point of my pentagon. So what I'm going to do is, from the center O, putting it on the line OA, I'm going to do an angle of 72 degrees. So following it around 72, just like that. And what I'm really doing here is I'm almost creating that kind of triangle there. So connect that across. And really what I've actually found there, now I'll heavy that in, is the next point on my pentagon. So I didn't have the length of, or the sides of the pentagon, I didn't have the side lengths, but by using an angle of 72 degrees, that angle right there, if 
by using that angle there, 72 degrees, which was this angle up here, I was able to determine another point in my pentagon. Now that I have one side length of my pentagon, I can find the others. So very quickly from here, I can take this length and mark it off. That'll give me another point, another point, and another point. And then <coughs> what I'm going to do is simply connect all them up. So there you have it. There is how we draw a sorry a pentagon inside of a circle. So we just used the uh, angle of 72 degrees, which I kind of showed you how we explained how we got it inside in here. Okay. If I was to connect all of them up, it would actually start to look like this. Okay. So that's the pentagon version. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the hexagon version. So once again, a little bit of an explanation. 60 degrees is our exterior angle. We got that 360 degrees divided by the number of sides 6 gives us 60 degrees. So 60 degrees is our exterior, our interior angle is 120. Okay, from this line here to this line, that angle there is 120. Once again, as you can see, I've connected all the corners to the center, okay, and this one is actually a little bit easier, it's just connecting the opposite kind of corners, okay, that by connecting the opposite corners, I bisect all my interior angles, so if this was 120, 120 divided by 2, that makes all of these interior angles also 60 degrees. Just do a few of them. So you can see 60, 60, 60, 60. And we know these triangles, the six of them I actually have inside here this time, every one of these, 60, 60, that leaves the angle up here to be 60 as well. So all these angles up here are 60 degrees also. This one, this one, and likewise, this one, this one, and so on. Every angle in there is 60 degrees. Okay, so that 60 degrees is actually going to help us construct our hexagon down here. So, in completing the hexagon down here, we're going to use the same principle, only this time, as you can see from the center, I've done another circle radius 50, I've got my center row, and instead of doing a vertical line, I've just kind of done a horizontal line. Okay, just showing you, you usually would do a vertical line, it's usually how it's taught, but just to show you that you can use both principles. So, coming down here, I'm going to use my protractor. And I'm going to measure an angle of 60 degrees. Right to there. I'm going to draw that in. And if you actually look, I'm going to connect that point now from there to there. If you actually look, that triangle that I've done there is kind of like this triangle here. Okay? Now that I've got my side length, at this point, what we could do is we could take that side length on our compass, and I could mark it off six times, or in this case, actually five times. So one, so I have it here. Two, three. The last one should meet up, and it does. Okay, so at that point, then connect all the points up. There's our six degree angle. Okay, now just actually explain a little bit more on that. I could have also, from the center, or just gone like that as well done an angle up at 60 degrees. Okay, just showing you the protractor because that's generally the method that would be used. So now what we're going to move on to guys is the octagon. So on the octagon we can see our exterior angle is 45 degrees. 360 divided by the number of sides, 8, gives us 45 degrees. That means our interior angle is 135 degrees. Okay, so this one's a little bit harder, just a little bit of maths here. So 135 which we know our interior angle to be. All these interior angles here are 135. And every one of them you can see has been bisected by a line that is connected to the center. So once again, 
we have eight sides. We've actually got eight triangles here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what we have to do is we have to work out these angles here, from this line here to this line. We know the overall angle to be 135. So, a little bit of maths. I'm going to do 135 divided by 2. That's equal to, just working it out, uh, 67.5. Okay, 67.5. So that means the angle inside here is 67.5. Likewise with this one, 67.5 degrees. Likewise with this one, 67.5 degrees. Okay. Now as you can see here, I've got these two angles of a triangle, which is here, 67.5 and 67.5. We know they add up to 135. That means the angle up here left at the top is 45 degrees. Okay. So now you can see that 45 is the same as the 45 here. So I was actually just showing you there on these three pentagons, uh, hexagons, and octagons uh, how we actually where that comes from. Okay, because generally the rule of thumb is 360 divided by five gives you the exterior angle, but it also gives you this little guy inside in here as well. Okay, so that's quite helpful. Now what we're going to do once again, I've done a circle. This time I did a circle with radius 60, so it's a bit bigger than these ones just to fit in my octagon. And this time from my center O, I've done a line down, okay, down um, vert or sorry, down vertically, okay, and uh, to give me a point A. Likewise, in the first one I went up, second one I went across, this one I went down, okay. So what we want to do here now, once again, is using our protractor. I could actually use my 45 degree set square as well. I'll go to 45 degree set square just to show you the boat work. Creating an angle from this line at 45 degrees. cut my circle. Where it cuts my circle, that helps me determine one side length, right there, like that. Okay, just to show you, this should read 45 degrees, if I put it on it accurately, and it is perfectly 45 degrees. Okay, so what I want to do now is, having constructed one side, I can now find the rest of them because I have now found the side lengths. So I take that distance on my compass from there to there. I'm going to mark that off then. I should keep going. There we have it. So just heavy goes in. So there we have it guys. That is how you construct uh, three different types of polygons, our pentagon, our hexagon and our octagon all inside of a circle. Could have probably done it a little bit quicker, but I thought it was important there to explain uh, how we actually got these into, or sorry, these angles inside of our pentagon, hexagon, and our octagon as well. Okay. Uh, once again, guys, hope you found that helpful. That's the video done.